This guide is going to cover everything you need to know about gene splicing and barotrauma. As you make your way through Europa, killing the different monsters, exploring wrecks and ruins, you will find genetic material. Once this is refined, it will reveal a special trait that can be inserted into your body that not only gives you an edge in the game, but can also change your physical appearance too. So let's start off with how to get genes. Monsters in the game have a chance on death to drop unidentified genetic material, which I'm going to call UGM. In addition to the monsters, sometimes Rex will have UGM, and also on the larger alien ruins, there are genetic chambers that have a chance to drop some as well. The drop rate of UGM can be increased if you have a medical doctor or security officer with the right talents. For the medic, we have the gene harvester underneath the scientist tree. This increases the drop rate of UGM by 35% when a monster monster is killed outside the submarine. For the alien ruins, the medic has the skill researcher's intuition underneath the xenologist tree. This increases the chance of finding additional items inside the alien ruins by 50%. Next we have the security officer that has the skill deep sea slayer. This is located underneath the specialist tree. This will increase the chance of dropping additional UGM by 40%. So if you have a medic and soldier who have those skills, the soldier when killing and looting a monster outside the submarine has a 75% chance of finding UGM. All UGM is randomized, so there is no way of farming specific material. However, there are three tier sets of UGM, each tier giving you stronger genes. But again, this is randomized. Tier one gets you genes between strengths 10 to 20 percent, 2 gets you 20 to 40 percent, and tier 3 gets you 30 to 60 percent. The higher the percent, the better trait from the gene. To refine the UGM's genes, you will need to use one stabilizine. This is readily available from swim bladders, which are most commonly found on hammerheads. If you want to know more about hammerheads, you can check out my Monsters Guide Part 3, links in the video description below. With one stabilizine and one UGM, you will need to refine both inside a research station. These are located at the different outposts throughout Europa, as well as on some submarines like the Winter Halter. After the randomization of luck has been applied and your UGM is refined, you will be left with a monster gene that has a percentage strength. If you have a medic with the skill gene therapist under the scientist tree, then you will gain an extra 10% in a refined gene's potency. So in theory, you could land yourself with a gene of strength 70 on your first first try. You can increase the strength by further combining genes, which we'll talk about in a second. Once you have combined or refined the genetic material you wish to use, you will need a gene splicer that can be crafted or bought from most stations. Open your character's health panel, equip the gene splicer, and insert the genetic material into that. Now your character has gained those genetic traits. As a note, if you remove genetic material, it will be destroyed in the process and you will need to get new genes if you wish to use them with your character. As a special mention, if you have a medic with the skill Advanced Splicer underneath the scientist tree, you get access to the Advanced Gene Splicer. This will allow you to have two refined genes at once. Next, we're going to cover the different genes and what they do. As there's a lot to go through, I'm going to cover the upper end of each gene, which assumes that you have genes of strength 100. First, we have the crawler gene. This increases your swimming speed by up to 50%. Next is the mud raptor gene that will grow a beak on your character's head that you can use to attack enemies with and break doors. This can be done with the monster attack key which is default for F for most players. On from that we have the moloch gene that can reduce physical damage taken by up to 25%. Next is the mantis gene that can increase your walking and running speed by up to 25%. After that we have the tiger thresher gene which decreases your oxygen consumption by up to 100%. Then we have the hammerhead gene that will increase your melee strength by up to 100%. 
On from that, we have the Hammerhead Matriarch gene, which will heal the six different types of internal damage at a rate of minus 0.75 strength per second. Next, we have the Spineling gene that can grow physical Spineling spikes out the back of a character. These can be fired off, again using the Monster Attack key. After that, we have the Husk gene. This prevents the last stage of the Husk infection from ever happening, meaning a character can have the Husk infection without it being fatal. Next, we have the Mollusk gene that increases your health by 10% when receiving physical damage. After that is the Skitter gene, which increases your movement speed by up to 10%, again on receiving physical damage. And finally, we have the Hunter gene. This will boost your melee weapon damage by up to 100% on receiving physical damage. For every gene successfully harvested, make sure to leave a like on this video so you can showcase your overpowered Giga Chad of a character. So now that we've looked at the individual genes, let's discuss how to combine them. You can combine genes together to either increase the percentage of a gene, which will increase its effectiveness, or combine two separate genes together to get both of their buffs. However, in the process of combination, there is a chance to taint genes with a negative trait that will affect the character. First, we have Tunnel Vision, that will apply blur and a constant screen distortion. Next is Rigid Joints, that will reduce your movement speed by up to 45%. On from that, we have hypersensitivity that will increase incoming damage by up to 75%. After that, we have xenobiology that will reduce medical effectiveness by up to 66%. Next, we have outside influence that will apply psychosis constantly. On from that, we have glass jaw. This will reduce your stun resistance by up to 75%. After that, we have decrepify that will reduce your health by up to 25%. Moving on, we have muscular dystrophy that reduces your melee damage output by up to 50%. And lastly, and possibly the worst one of the lot, we have inflamed lung that reduces your vitality by 50 over time. To reduce the chance and strength of negative effects, you need to have a very high medical skill. And in addition, if you have a medic with the skill genetic stability under the scientist tree, you can reduce the chance of tainted materials by up to 50%. As a special note, the husk Mudraptor and Spineling genes work the same regardless of their strength, so cannot be refined to gain extra strength. With the genes and their uses covered, for me, the best ones are a combination of Crawler with Hammerhead Matriarch or the regular Hammerhead and Mantis genes. However, with the potential drawback of tainted genes, I would recommend sticking with pure genes rather than mixing two together. Along with some of the talents I talk about in the Weapons Guide Part 1, the combination of regular hammerhead genes and some of the talents mean you can one-shot monsters in the game. That's it for this guide. If you enjoyed it, make sure to check out how to support me in the links below. As always, like, subscribe, all that good stuff. And until next time, peace. Before the outro video, I want to give a huge shout out to all my supporters, especially the ones on Patreon. You mean the world to me and allow me to keep doing what I'm doing. Thank you. Yeah, no, no.